very much for that. Very, very interesting. And all of a sudden, just dawned on me that I have one of my biggest challenges ever follow up from the But I'm delighted to I'm delighted to be here and deliver my talk uh, in this very interesting industry, which I believe is uh, uh, digital healthcare, which is transforming into digital health, which I believe you will absorb the old healthcare industry with technology and new, a completely new industry for us. So, I've already been presented, I've done many things in my life, but the last four years I've been heavily involved in digital health technology in UK and also overseas. It's a fascinating uh, time to be involved and technology is invading our lives and we already seen with the zidings we are getting our phones out but there will be claims now the doctor is in your pocket the whole times but what is very interesting about technology is what how is actually impacting in our lives my son He's only six years old. He's been playing with his iPad since the age of two. I'm not sure if he's good parent would, but can you believe he's only six and he's got an iPhone six? Now, when I upgrade my phone, my phone has been confiscated at, at home all times. My iPhone six S was full of games, so each time I come home was kind of uh, Dave's. It was David's turn to play with his dad. So when I upgraded my phone, I decided to give my phone to David and I went to new phone. And sometimes I think, is a good thing to do? I'm not sure. But that's the impact of technology in our day lives. And also, I want to really give you a broader um, outlook in what is coming but the, the previous slide, I show you the I watch, uh, Apple Watch <coughs> number four. And actually, they're doing a big study in America, in Stanford Medicine University, with about 400,000 patients with the revolution of technology. And the idea is to actually diagnose heart arrhythmia early on and see if it can be prevented in terms of uh, heart fibrillation caused heart attacks. So, as we all know, Apple are very interested in um, health for quite some time. They're doing things for a reason, and they have the, the Apple uh, app for quite some time, and things are progressing so fast. So, the technology is part of us. Many of you might have a wearable, or not, that there are big trends that say that more or less one in three adults have a wearable so far, and if you don't have one, you will perhaps have the expectation of getting one in the next year or so. But what is really happening right now in this interesting industry? Kevin already mentioned artificial intelligence, which is a big trend now in digital healthcare and also in other industries. But when we talk about artificial intelligence, I always think it's been around for a while and I always think back in 2011 in the United States was a program called Jeopardy, which is a knowledge-based kind of uh, program. And IBM Watson has been around for a while and they decided to challenge the top players in his quiz type of program. Can you believe what happened? Well, IBM Watson and the power computing and the machine, machine learning and artificial intelligence together were so powerful, they processed all the data and all the questions and answers and the possible <coughs> right answers so fast and so quickly that they enabled to beat the top world players by a mile. And we only now 
probably around seven or eight years later, recognize and see the potential of artificial intelligence. But back then, some big companies, such as IBM, being innovating around the space. It's certainly an opportunity for medicine, and it's certainly an opportunity for healthcare to utilize that computing power and prevent disease, diagnose early, and doing much more for us as human beings. And also machine, machine learning, another big trend, very hot in the market right now. I would say machine learning is a kind of arm of, of artificial intelligence where the data is processed at a faster pace and is about recognizing patterns of data and eventually creating some new diagnosis with it. Kevin also mentioned big data, which is a big deal. I wouldn't say, in my humble opinion, that big data is a technology in my opinion, is more a capability. What really is the technology <coughs> is predictive analytics with big data, a combination of artificial intelligence and also the IT blended with big data. Because the big data on its own, you won't be a technology, can't be a technology. But it's very interesting what can be done and what is already uh, possible in the marketplace. What I would like to talk about now is more trends and more tech that is available to us. I could mention blockchain, which is having an impact in many sectors, is coming to healthcare now. I could mention um, virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality. Some of these technologies are out by the main technology vendors shall I say, and they are certainly starting to make a mark on healthcare. I'll give you an example. With the virtual reality, on Channel 5 last week was actually a surgeon doing a live operation using virtual reality. And also for um, medical students, you can create medicine education through experiences using this type of technologies. So, these things are happening right here, right now. I could mention a few more things, but I'll keep that for the very last few slides. This slide for me represents a technology that is used in Japan right now by University of Tokyo. They created a um, a very small sensor that with some stretchable uh, materials they create some skin electronics which is highly innovative and is the possibility of being embedded in our human bodies it can be utilized for up to five days up to a week and giving some reliable insights and data that can be used for some diagnostics and medicine practices. So, there are really interesting things happening. Very interesting. And some of the capabilities that I already mentioned in the true potential, it's what I'm really interested about. Because creating technology just for the sake of creating technology, that's not what healthcare and medicine needs. And what I'm seeing now is the health conditions being addressed specifically. And I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the largest uh, technology players, Google, very recently, they have a life science company called Verily. And they did a study with um, a smartwatch internally. It was not for commercial purposes, for Parkinson's disease. And <coughs> when I think about technology, I always think about wearables. <coughs> And because it's my field. And wearables now are really, I think they come in a third generation addressing specific conditions, which is 
it's very attractive to me. It's not just a matter of tracking steps or tracking a bit of activity data. Actually, they're addressing specific conditions such as mental health, omission, Parkinson's disease. But the remote capabilities and the, the numerous opportunities that sensing technologies and wearable technologies bring to us are really important with some little intervention because in healthcare what we need is to have as less intervention as possible and also get that remote monitoring going as best as we can. And I'm not a clinician, but the clinicians have a huge challenge ahead using technologies. But adding value to the whole process of healthcare is actually very challenging because what is very um, challenging in healthcare is all the processes around addressing patients, uh, bringing the technology to the equation. Because the technology is already out there, but healthcare efficiency, it's not all about technology. Otherwise, we just could have our doctor in our pocket and everything would function really, really well. So early diagnosis is important, but empowering the professionals and all the healthcare stakeholders is a must. And now I'd like to talk to you about this uh, skin patch developed by um, a company in the US called Vital Connect. I have no associations with them. But in terms of the business case, I would like to share with you what is already out there. Uh, they're doing a, a scale up study with Johnson & Johnson, the pharmaceutical company, and they're working around oncology now for cancer uh, patient treatments. And this patch can be is non-invasive, as you can see, and it can be used up to a week and produces medical graded data. Because one of the problems in healthcare is actually to get reliable data, but also, as Kevin mentioned, how to deal with the data is such a challenge. It's not easy. And here are some of the features that technology brings to us. The major vital signs are covered. The ECG, heart rate, heart variability, respiratory rate, even activity and fall detection. And that, it's very, very powerful. Reliable data, <coughs> several sets of data sets from one source. The problem to analyze it would be different, but there we go. So what's next? Emerging tech. <coughs> Already mentioned a few technologies to you. Ah, by the way, this is Ava. She is a digital human created by a company in New Zealand called Soul Machines. Very, very interesting. And you know now we're talking about technology and everybody's creating these chatbots. You can actually ask about their condition if you're feeling well. And this company, I believe, are doing something really, really innovative. They claim that they're humanizing artificial intelligence. So he looks like a human being. He looks like one of us, really. But he's a digital human being. They have senses. They have feelings. They recognize interaction. The application for healthcare in the future would be immense. They already have um, applications in other industries, such as banking, for customer service, instead of you just chatting to someone that you don't actually see it by messaging. Many companies just offer that sort of interaction already texting a customer service, you can interact with a nearly human being. <laughs> I wouldn't compare Ava to us yet, but she's very, very close. <coughs> Already mentioned some sensing technologies and wearables, and now as you can see that gentleman has got a microchip. And 
in Sweden, and I like to talk about the Nordic countries, they're very innovative in healthcare, by the way. The population is testing this microchip, which will be an implantable chip. It causes a bit of controversy. People mention about security, uh, data breaches, and also you can have human information or any, any other health conditions. But this is the future, a very small sensor that transports your health data at all times. It can even be used as a, an ID factor. You can even have your credit card details stored in there, so you can go out without the wallet. <laughs> can you imagine that? I wouldn't go as far without, without a, a mobile phone, because that would be my worst case scenario. <laughs> but that's where we are heading. And what really excites me is the intersection of technology and humanity. And as you can see on the far end picture, these things called sensors, wearables, emerging technologies, implantables, they are here to stay and they can go anywhere you can imagine around the human body. And just to rephrase the question, some new emerging trends, I already mentioned the skin electronics from Japan, electronic tattoos, smart jewelry, which are, it's a really fashionable trend, a nice wearable, it doesn't look like a wearable, it looks like a piece of jewelry. Smart clothing and electronic clothing, where the sensors are embedded in the, in the fabrics and sensors and implantables. I believe it's a very interesting and exciting time to be involved in healthcare technology. I'd like to show you that.